Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Olise, the son of Mube. And I want us to just have a short discussion about a video that we posted a few days ago uh, where we had one of Nelson Chamisa's closest allies uh, uh, from the opposition. His name is Mr. Amos Chibaya. And many of you so the video and you even commented on it uh is a video in which he is warning giving a warning to president emerson Nangakwa that either he allows democracy to prevail or democratic systems to prevail in the country uh, including the holding of free of fresh free and fair elections which is what his party is uh been sounding since the days was part of the triple c which they have been forcing trying to force out uh, rather of the zimbabwean political situation they've been saying that there's an illegitimacy crisis uh, in zimbabwe and that it is uh, a result of what they claim are stolen elections in zimbabwe they say were stolen by zanu pf and president emerson nangagwa using what they say is a, a corrupt Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, uh, commission uh, and what they call a captured judiciary uh, in the country. Yeah. <laughs> So, Mr. Jibaya was saying that either President Mnangakwa allows the country to hold a fresh uh, election which will be free and fair and that he allows the will of the people to prevail in that particular election and then he said he went on to say that if president Nangakwa doesn't allow this to take root then he must be warned that whatever befell uh, former strongman former dictator robert gabriel mugabe in november is going to befall him he even quipped that um Nangakwa taught them, or that Zanu PF taught them how to remove a president from power, from power, obviously referring to the coup that took out Robert Mugabe, in which Nangakwa himself was a key role player and main beneficiary because he became Zanu PF president. He took over the presidency that Robert Mugabe had yet to finish in the state, and then he subsequently won the next two elections which have kept him in power but by of course who has now left triple c in solidarity with former party president nelson chamisa and they are now fronting the blue movement as they call it which has not yet been given a, a proper name chibaya is saying that fresh elections will happen or else nanga will be taken out of power he says that credit for the coup that took place in 2017 should not go only to zanu pf he said it's not only zanu pf that took robert mugabe out of power but everyone including the opposition because they led the matches and of course this is true that zanu pf supporters uh, were commandeered to march on the streets and to demand the removal of robert mugabe after their 
uh, their structures had met, of course, having been commandeered again to rule in favor of a return or to take decisions, uh, resolve in favor of a return of Emerson Nangako, who had just been expelled from the party and from government to return and become the acting president of the party while Robert Mukabe was, according to their uh, terminology, retired, while members of the so-called G40 faction, who included Professor Jonathan Moyo, uh, Sylvia Kasukwere, Patrick Juwao, were summarily dismissed from the party, as well as Grace Mukabe, who, was the former, who is the former first lady and Mukabe's former wife, you remember that Robert Mugabe passed on soon after the coup. So, Chibaya is saying that they took also part. So, alongside these ZANU-PF supporters were commandeered. We also had the opposition supporters also marching in solidarity because we had built uh, our struggle around Robert Mugabe must go. So, we forgot that Robert Mugabe was just one man uh, in that particular party. He didn't take decisions. He was part of a collective that took decisions, including the decisions to kill Zimbabweans in protection of their power, uh, including decisions to use the military to subdue uh, dissenting voices, using the military to crack on the opposition and silence them, to disrupt opposition rallies, as well as to harass, maim, abduct, and kill opposition supporters. So we still allowed because when people took to the streets, they always knew that the next person to take over will be from Zanu PF. And the telltale signs signs were there that Emerson Nangaku was the one was going to take over because he had warned two weeks earlier in his uh, letter to Robert Mugabe that he was coming back to Zimbabweans to lead them to take over the apparatus, the, I mean the echelons of power. That's what he said in his letter and we knew that whoever is going to take over will be from ZANU-PF as well as that it was going to be Emerson Nangagwa. So Chibaya is saying that either fresh elections or a coup. So now among the people who commented, including those who sent us some comments via WhatsApp. There are many who said that fresh elections, which Shiba is calling for, which Nelson Chamisa has always been calling for, and the opposition has been calling for, will not work because of uh, the poison chalice that we have in terms of our systems in Zimbabwe. They say that no matter how many elections are going to be held, the result will just be the same. They will be stolen, people will be harassed, people will be killed, opposition rallies will be dis uh, disrupted, and opposition leaders and supporters will be arrested and with impunity. So they are calling for more drastic uh, solutions to the problem in Zimbabwe, which is the political crisis in Zimbabwe. They are saying that instead of calling for elections or demonstrations, the country should be thrown to a war. This is what they are saying. And this is what I want to talk about uh, briefly. Uh, for those that are calling for war, you need to do your research. Try and find out what happens in a situation where there is a war. You have an ongoing war in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine. That's a cross-border war. Just check the destruction the destruction that is happening there check the number of people that have been lost the number of lives that have been lost the number of lives that have been destroyed in terms of displacements in terms of uh being left with nothing in their possession some of them being driven out uh, as refugees to neighboring countries where they don't know what the future holds for them that is a cross border who Look at what is happening in Gaza. That is what we call war. Wherever there is war, there is a genocide. Innocent people get killed. Pregnant women get killed. Elderly get killed. Children, minors for that matter, also get killed. 
the nation becomes destroyed. Then you look closer to home in South Sudan. In Sudan. In the DRC, where the war has been raging, just close by Mozambique. So when you call for war, is that what you envision? Let's not say for other people, for yourself. Because there is nothing that will spare you from being in that particular situation. And who is going to fight that war? How? Being begged by who? Are you not advocating for innocent Zimbabweans to be butchered by a ruthless regime? Because I will tell you that even ZANU-PF people, those warmongers like Chris Mutsuango have been telling people that if they want to take over Zimbabwe, they must first go to war. They are not prepared even themselves to go to war. They ran away. They spent decades running away from Smith soldiers. They never fought. They, they are lying to you that they fought anything. They would uh, shoot here and then run away. That is why they don't have any recorded victory. Unless, if you've been reading their propaganda, there is no recorded victory that they ever uh, achieved against the regime of Ian Smith. What happened is that many people were killed. So is that what you are advocating for? Oh, as you know that you don't have any backing from any state that is existing, especially when the African continent has now tightened its anti-terrorism uh, laws. Where, which country is going to give you that ground to train your soldiers? Who is going to back you with the arms? And have you seen anywhere in Africa where a civil war post-colonial era has ever uh, resulted in anything? What has happened is that no country after uh, independence in Africa can be said to have achieved anything in terms of a civil war. We have raging wars in Mozambique. There was a lull after Alphonse uh, Lagama and the Renamo government sat down to agree on a truce. They have resumed again with Capo Delgado, where there is now another insurgency there. DRC, how many years have we been seeing this? From the 1990s, there's been a war. Kapila took out Mobutu uh, Seseko. After that, they turned against him. The war has been raging on, and it's been generations now. Look at South Sudan, the same uh, atmosphere, and people are dying. Look at Sudan. People are dying. They are being driven out of their countries in droves. Is that what you wish for? Is it better for the country to be thrown into such turmoil, into such destruction, than for it to go through the way of a reform, an internal reform, which is negotiated between ZANU-PF and the opposition? Because at the end of the day, we all need to agree that whatever is happening is not sparing ZANU-PF supporters. It's not sparing uh, mainstream opposition supporters is not sparing even those who claim that they've got nothing to do with politics. So, why don't we sit down, come together, and say what is it that we want to leave behind as a legacy for our children, as a legacy for the future generations, and then together with even the enemies that we call them, for those that call ZANU PF people enemies, sit down with even them, despite. Uh, our divergent views and our different philosophies and ideologies. We have to sit down and say what is it that we want for Zimbabwe? Yes, the leaders will try and resist that, but there can be nothing that defeats the power of the masses. Because the problem that is there right now is that for every Jack and Jill who is supporting the opposition, there is another Jack and Jill who is supporting zanu -Pier. So the country is bipolar as it is right now. It's polarized politically. We need to first bridge this polarization and together agree on certain things that will drive the country forward. And that means having some compromise, reaching out, reaching some compromise as to what is good that might be working against us, what is good that might be working against zanu -Pier, but benefiting the people of Zimbabwe, benefiting the Zimbabwe as a country and benefiting the future of Zimbabwe. I believe this is what we need to do as opposed to throwing the country into further turmoil, especially 
a war situation. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share. But also, send through your views and comments as to how you view my contributions as well as the calls by those that I'm talking about. Thank you.